welcome back to the green yard it is a somewhat chilly definitely overcast uh maybe rainy we'll find out um january late january day here in phoenix arizona i am over in the pool part of the green yard where we have all of our bananas and our mexican key lime as well as our uh uh, ice cream bean, our Barbados cherry, um, plants like that over in this pool part of the green yard. And the reason we're over here is because um, of a recent video I did, which was our tropical fruit, free, fruit trees after a hard freeze. Uh, and I went through and I included a lot of our tropical fruit trees. If you haven't checked it out yet, um, it is actually a, our most popular video. I also thought it was a pretty good video. I like sharing with you guys uh, the positives, of course, you know, harvesting, like I just did a harvesting video of our Buddha hand citron, as well as those negatives, right? Hard freezes definitely don't make our trees look good. As you can tell with all of our bananas over here, uh, we have our frost fabric structures that after wind and rain, which you just got to over an inch of rain here in the green yard in the last week um, you know they start to fall over and they don't look good definitely not a pretty pretty time of year uh, winter in uh, Phoenix especially here in the green yard growing those tropical fruit trees but our um, tropical fruit trees after a hard freeze I went through specifically our you know soursop jackfruit lychee our trees like that and I had one comment in particular that stood out. Um, someone asked me to talk specifically about our bananas and what we do for bananas when it comes to a freeze, how we handle them, um, do we protect them, all kinds of questions like that. And so that's part of the reason we're over here in the pool part of the green yard with all of our bananas is to address that comment and kind of go through what I've done and what I've had success with in terms of bananas. Oh, over here in the food forest part, I'm sorry, over here in the pool part of the green yard, we do have three different varieties of bananas. We have our dwarf Cavendish banana over on the far side. Um, that one is like our store-bought bananas. I'm really excited. I've had it produce one rack. It produced it last I shouldn't say last November, November of 2022, it pushed out a rack. I was so excited. But then of course we had that really cold winter in 22 to 23 and that rack didn't last. We right next to me here, this is our dwarf Namwa uh, banana. It actually put out this rack back in September. It's been very slow um, putting out that rack. We'll see if these, uh, this rack of bananas actually makes it through to spring or not i can see a little bit of frost damage down here towards the bottom of the flower uh, we'll find out there's actually uh, you can't see it from there but um, there's actually one other stock that's producing a banana flower right now and it looks like it got hit by the hard freeze so we may or may not get some dwarf namwas bananas here in the near future i'm not sure right um, and then the rest of our bananas and what I've had a lot of success with it, it are those blue javas, those ice cream bananas. So I've had a lot of racks off these blue javas and this is one of those racks right now. It's kind of fun to see. Um, actually, my wife yesterday was asking me, why is it called blue java? Bananas aren't blue. But if you compare uh, these, the, the color of these bananas versus our dwarf namwa, you can actually see these ones are a lot greener than our blue javas. These ones actually do look and have a little bit of a blue hint to them, a blue hue, right? Uh, so kind of cool, those blue javas. I've had a lot of racks off of those. In fact, I just harvested one back in December, uh, which is kind of crazy that I was able to harvest a rack of bananas in December, but it was very, very good. Um, so let's talk about our bananas. I wanna focus on three main things today. I wanna to talk about before, meaning the before a freeze, what can we do to prepare during that freeze? What can we do during that freeze to maybe help our bananas out? And then of course, after our freeze, what do we do? These bananas have all been through that hard freeze. They saw at least 28 degrees, maybe less. I measured over in the food forest part of the green yard when we had that freeze, it was 30 degrees. Typically we see over here in the wide open area of the pool part of the green yard, we usually see at least two, maybe three degrees colder. So they definitely saw a hard freeze over in the pool part of the green yard. So let's go ahead and talk about those three main areas, right? Before, during, and after. Here we go.
right, so before we talk about the before, uh, what to do before a hard freeze happens when it comes to our uh, bananas, a um, little backstory with our bananas here in the, in the cool part of the green yard. Uh, bananas are the first tropical plant that I ever purchased when I started getting into, you know, kind of growing my own food. Um, and the reason why is I just love bananas. I love the way they look. If you talk about adding, uh, you know, that tropical look to your landscape, to your green yard, bananas are definitely the way to go. They do really, really well and they just look so tropical. Um, and they produce bananas, which is not a bad thing either, especially if you like bananas. And so um, all of these bananas here, except for our dwarf Cavendish, actually came um, off of two mother plants, the first two tropical uh, plants that I bought back in 2018 when I started getting into this. I bought uh, a dwarf um, Namwa and a blue Java plant. It was just one stock, one of these stocks in a pot. And I went home and I planted them and every single one of these groupings, these clumps of bananas that you see actually came from those original mother plants uh, as an Iho or a pup. Um, someday I want to do a video on how to uh, take out those Ihos, take out those pups and transfer them, replant them to make new banana plants, right? Uh, banana clumps. So. I just, I love bananas and I've been seeing a lot of success this last year. They've been in the ground for three years. We moved in in 2020. They've all been in the ground for three years and I'm finally starting to see consistent fruit with our bananas and decent sized racks too. Um, so from my experience, it takes about three years to get those decent racks and good looking banana clumps as well. Before that hard freeze though, what do we do? Well, there's uh, three things that um, I've done before that I've had success with, with our banana bunches, uh, our clumps of bananas there, right? Uh, the first one being, and this is what we use now, we don't do anything else with this, it is mulch. Uh, I talk about mulch a lot. Here's some beautiful mulch, right? Wood chips with some, even some pine needles in there. Really amazing mulch. Um, we heavily mulch our bananas here in the green yard, at least a foot deep, if not more than that. And that mulch really helps to insulate the corm and the roots of that banana plant. Um, the stalks, not so much, but in my experience, the stalks come back. And we'll talk about that when we talk about after that hard freeze, what to do. Um, one of the other things that you can do, and I tried this once and it was successful, but I tried it one time, is you can take cattle panel or even some chicken wire. And uh, usually it works better if you have one or two stalks coming off of your uh, you know, banana plant there. Um, something like this where we have 10 or 12 stalks, probably a little bit harder to do this method. Um, but what you do is you take that cattle panel or the chicken wire and you put it in kind of a circle around the outside of, of the banana stalk leaving space in between six to 12 inches in between the banana stock and the edge of the of the cattle fence or the chicken wire and then you take your leaves right your your light um, airy mulch and you throw it in there you don't want to use things like grass clippings or anything like that that really heavy stuff even this is kind of heavy although you could probably get away with doing this kind of mulch but any dried leaves anything like that you just put it around and you really stuff it around that banana stalk, those one or two stalks in that circle, and it helps to insulate that stalk as well as the corm and the roots in the ground. So that's kind of the second way. And then the third way, which I've done before, I did this actually um, the first year, that first winter that we had these in the ground, the winter of 2020, I did this just because they were all pups and they were all new and I wanted to make sure that they survived. I actually built a frost fabric structure for all of my bananas, just like our ice cream bean here has. Uh, so I did the four corners, uh, you know, put the roof on, used our frost fabric, and then I actually supplied that supplemental heat. Uh, I like to use those C9 Christmas light bulbs. Um, and it was successful. I mean, they're doing great here, and they definitely survived that first winter in the ground. So I would say that method, maybe the first or second winter uh, to use it, but you really have to try it and see what works best for you. Let's talk about during that hard freeze, some things that we can do to make sure our bananas survive. Here we go.
All right, so what about during, right? We talked about before, meaning kind of, you know, if we know in advance, we know a week in advance that there's gonna be that hard freeze, or even if we wanna just protect them for the whole winter, um, you know, we know it's coming up that we, we get cold in that uh, November, January, February, December time. So we just wanna protect our bananas, not to worry about them. And that's what our before was for. But let's say it's, you know, that night, right? That night of that hard freeze, we know it's gonna be 28 degrees or 30 degrees. What can we do, especially, and I see this the most, and I, and this is what I did the most too, and when I freaked out the most with my bananas, uh, especially when I was starting out growing them, I got a beautiful rack of Namwa bananas on here. I've worked very hard with my bananas. I wanna make sure that I can harvest them, right? What can I do? It's gonna be 28 degrees, 20, maybe even less than that. I need to make sure that I'm gonna protect my, uh, my bananas, my investment here, right? To make sure I get those bananas. So what are some things that I can do? Well, um, the, the things that I've tried in the past and had slight success with, um, wrapping this. So I've actually wrapped the racks of bananas in frost fabric as well as in burlap before. So I've taken the frost fabric and I've actually gone and I've wrapped these up in frost fabric. And it actually does protect the bananas themselves from getting frost burn. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the plant is gonna stay warm enough to help these bananas reach maturity, right? Um, but it does mean that uh, we can at least protect it from getting burnt itself. I actually have some frost burnt bananas over on my other rack over there that I haven't really been paying attention to and uh, they did get burnt uh, pretty bad with that frost and they just basically turned black, right? So that's one thing that we can do, you know, that night before. We don't want to leave that frost fabric or that burlap on our banana rack. Uh, we basically just want to protect it that night before, you know, before we go to bed uh, and then take it off the next morning or the following day once it warms up again. Remember our bananas generally below 50 degrees, they don't really grow anymore. It's hard for them to grow because it's, it's colder than what they're used to. So usually our banana racks, including this one, are kind of in that dormant stage where they're just kind of sitting there. Um, and hopefully in the spring, they start picking back up and, and we are, we're able to harvest them. I had one rack that I was able to overwinter last year, and that's actually the rack that I made my harvesting video on last spring. So uh, it is possible to overwinter those bananas racks just a little bit more on the difficult side and then the last thing that i can do um, if i have protected my banana right i've wrapped it up like this i in my frost fabric structure or even outside my frost fabric structure i can always use a supplemental heat source whether it be those c9 christmas light bulbs or if you really want to get fancy and i haven't done this one yet you can use uh, there's a bunch of like propane um, like torches and things that you can use that are actually designed to help heat up an area if you have those tropical fruit trees not something that i've tried before i have tried the c9 light bulbs uh, and wrapping up our bananas during that freeze with uh, either that frost fabric or that burlap so let's talk about after after we get that hard freeze and our bananas look like this what should we do All right, so let's talk about the after. What do we do with our bananas after that hard freeze, right? We talked about the before uh, in preparation for that hard freeze. We talked about the during, right? That night of that hard freeze. So what do we do? It's we've had that hard freeze now. Our bananas look like this, right? All of our leaves are all dying. Um, what do we do? What can we do? Well, what we've done in the green yard and what I found the most success with is pretty much the easiest and simplest thing to possibly do. You just leave it alone, right? And it's really hard to do that because unfortunately in the winter, our bananas just look like crap. Uh, and that really is just the way that it goes here uh, in our colder climates. There's no real way to get around our bananas just looking like this for the four months, five months that we have uh, with those colder temperatures. In the spring, they end up just perking right back up um we have like our, our trunks like this right our smaller pups uh well we'll just use this one as an example so you'll see you know the leaves are all dying back what ends up happening is it just sprouts out 
new growth, new leaves from these tips uh, once we start getting those warmer temperatures, right? So that tends to be what ends up happening. Uh, part of the reason you don't want to trim these leaves, like I trimmed a few just so we can film right now, right? I took some of these leaves off. Um, but the reason you don't want to is for this reason right here. They actually fold down and they end up protecting the trunk and kind of insulating the trunk of these trees, right? Uh, the trunk of these plants, these, these uh, sections, these pups that are coming up. Oh, it's really raining now <laughs> until it's winter here in Phoenix. Um, and same thing with our with our racks. Like here's a really small rack of our blue java ice cream bananas. And same thing, look, leaves are actually folding over the racks, kind of protecting these racks from any additional frost that might happen, any additional cold weather. So when it comes to the after part, um, you can trim a little bit here and there, but it actually helps the bananas to look this way for the remainder of the cold season so that these leaves really help fold over and um, insulate those trunks and protect them from additional frost from additional cold weather so if you found success with uh you know any sort of protection from our for our bananas during those hard freezes please make sure to comment below share um, if you want to see another one of our fruiting or flowering tropical trees and how it does during the winter definitely make sure to comment below as well and um, as always live green plant lots and of course have fun we'll see you next time